Hey everyone, or good afternoon if you're on uh, Eastern Time. <clears throat> I'm glad you uh, set aside some time to be with us. I'm Mike Lohmeyer. Um, I have Eric here as well. We will be uh, uh, going through some of the Swiss Tech products for you. We were going to have a uh, third person, Alyssa, as you probably saw in the email invite, and there was a power pole knocked out by her home, and she's without power, so you'll just have the two of us. Um, so we are going to do a bunch of live, de live demos. I do have just a couple of slides, and I promise it's a couple. Uh, just to let you know what the whole family is and help you understand the grouping you're going to see and then everything Eric shows you live will make uh, sense. Mm -hmm. uh, I do have one and only one slide on who Grand Tech is. Uh, don't tell my CEO I just took 40 years and over 200 people and made one slide. But if you look at this one slide, if you stop in the upper right hand corner, start in the upper right hand corner, it lists all the things we do in general uh, across the food, uh, bev, pharmaceutical, nutraceutical uh, industries. And you can see all the capabilities there. And we can send this presentation out later if you'd like to see it. Uh, in the bottom right-hand corner, you see all of our locations, green dot being uh, satellite offices working from home, which is most of us right now. Uh, red dots being our actual brick and mortar offices, which we do have. Uh, bottom left-hand corner, you see all the uh, technology uh, companies we consider to be our true partners. Uh, we have capabilities in every technology you can imagine, and many people trained on many things. This list is where we uh, jointly work together on both joint marketing and even joint product development th with these companies and have very, very close relationships. And then in the upper left-hand corner, it's a small subset of some of the uh, more recognizable names in the pharmaceutical industries uh, who are customers of both uh, Grand Tech and uh, Systech Solutions. And Grand Tech is, as I said, a very large uh, systems integrator and solution provider. Um, what we're gonna show you today are the Systec and Solutions clean room uh, hardware and workstations. Uh, Systec is uh, an expert in GMP uh, IT OT hardware, has all the best in class for your pharmaceutical needs and hygienic production. It is made in Germany. It is all clean room compatible, very efficient. It's stainless steel IP65. And if you notice some of the buzz and chatter going online and in LinkedIn, for example, um, IP65 does not necessarily mean it's ready to be in a clean room, um, and we'll discuss that a little bit more in detail later. Uh, so that's really what we're going to cover. The products um, go into the environments I mentioned earlier, food and bev, cosmetics, uh, anywhere we have GMP uh, requirements and uh, hygienic areas. And the groupings of the products that Eric will be showing you, they are fixed and they are mobile. Fixed meaning just what it says, they are bolted down. Now, some can still move a bit while they're fixed, but they are, they are bolted down. And then there are some that are truly mobile, uh, battery operated cordless and can roll from room to room and be reused in various places. So with that, I'm gonna end the PowerPoint. I'm gonna turn it over to Eric and he will start showing you the actual products. Great, thank you, Mike. Um, yeah, uh, what I really have for us today to show you are a couple of uh, basically wave units, which are the computer terminals you see up top here with the attached keyboard on a, on a torque hinge. And then under them is the trolley, or what, what they're on are the trolley system. So it makes them very mobile. Um, we offer various trolleys that I'm going to show you here shortly. But I wanted to start today just looking at the Wave HMI system. This is really the ideal GMP uh, industrial computer for your clean room. Uh, we have this in different sizes, um, everything from a 21 inch to a 55 inch uh, from high definition to ultra high definition. Uh, we, we do offer that as well. This panel is unique. Um, we've really spared no expense with this. It's a touch screen, but it's also an IPS screen. And those of you that know what that is, it's in-plane switching. So it does offer a very, very high-grade uh, screen. Um, this screen is also projected capacitive touch. As I said, uh, you know, you can basically, you can use the keyboard on the screen. You can just use the screen. You also have the option here of the glass keyboard, which is on a single torque hinge, as I said. Um, this keyboard is really unique in that it does have an RFID reader on it right here. It's hard to see with that little camera, but this is actually something you can use for bioauthentication or um, checking in on your time card, things of that nature. It built directly into the keyboard itself. So it adds kind of a novel feature for that as well. Um, the screen, getting back to this, it's basically, you can view it from 180 degrees, so it's got a very wide viewing angle, uh, very easy to see, very bright, very crisp, um, and just very, very sharp in, in general. Uh, that's why I really like it. No rough edges. If you notice, this whole 
area here, there's no rough edges, there's no crevices, there's nothing on these devices that can hold dust or water typically. Hey, uh, Eric, Eric, yeah. can I interrupt? Um, uh, one person did make a comment that they cannot see the video feed and they're only getting audio. If there's anyone else out there who is not uh, seeing the video, uh, please put a comment in there so we can identify what that problem is. I mean, I'm seeing yeah. it, but I'm also inside the VPN of, of Grand Tech. Right. We'll wait a second because I want to make sure everyone's seeing this. Okay. And we do have a comment. <clears throat> we have a number of, of comments coming and say they can see video. Okay. So that's good. Um, okay. Yeah. Yep. I see Amy, Charlie. Okay. Um, yeah, sorry about that. If you can't see it, um, I don't know why, but um, we'll try to get somebody to fix that. I know Jeff's on the line, so we'll, we'll try to do that from an internal perspective. But um, back to this wave, you know, this is the 24 inch wave. It's probably our best selling unit because it gives you enough size for if you're going to be looking at MES systems, ERP systems um, combined on one screen, you can sort of look at everything. Um, but looking at the back of this, I just want to show everybody. I was talking about there's no real crevices, there's no real cracks or areas where water or any kind of fluid or dust can get in here. They're fully washed on ready. Everything we make is at least IP65 ready. So it's, it's ready to go. Um, what's unique about this trolley, and I'm going to get into the trolleys in just a second, but this is actually a Wi-Fi antenna on this trolley. Um, it attaches with four simple screws and everything is sealed. It has silicon seals on this. So it will never, ever get wet uh, internally. And then also on this is a really unique, just basically a uh, scanner holder that is optional as well to put your barcode scanner on there. Um, and then looking at this wave unit, this one's a little smaller. This is a 21 inch. Hopefully everyone can see that. I'll put the camera down just a little bit. This is a 21 inch wave. Um, again, Ideal HMI system for clean rooms, fully enclosed, fully encapsulated. Uh, it, it's essentially, as I said, it's an integrated personal computer into an industrial housing. There's no active fan. Um, it does offer extended temperature range for hardware that's internally built into it, so it's all embedded. Um, and then again, it's on a single torch, single torque hinge. The keyboard is attached to this, fully movable, fully able to move, and again. Cool thing about this is you can basically use a touch screen here or you can use your keyboard here um, either one and beauty of this also when I turn it around this is on more of a 60 degree angle so it's a bit shorter uh, I'm about 6'2 so it hits me pretty much perfectly but again this screen you can see this screen from 180 degrees and with this able to pivot it really it attracts a lot of different customers different heights, things of that nature. So it's, uh, it's really cool. I want to show everyone just the bottom of these as well. Um, take a look real quick. I'm going to pull this one back first. This is a three star. Again, this is a lower unit. Um, ideal unit though, if you are looking for more of a Without this, without this actual keyboard, it works very well with just the actual screen itself. And again, this is a 21 inch screen. This one over here is a 24 inch screen. So, um, like clean room operating station, really for mobile use. Um, it's plug and work. There's no install cost with this. It's very compact. And um, we're going to be incorporating basically a battery pack into this one very soon. Uh, right now it is plug-in only, but we will be incorporating the battery pack as we have in this one right here, the five star, which is extremely popular. Again, IP65 rated, and we can incorporate a wireless LAN adapter and Bluetooth into this. So let me just show everyone this one. And actually these two together are probably our best selling items. Uh, this is actually, as I said, this is a 24 inch wave. Nice size with the glass keyboard with the RFID reader built in. And this is a five star trolley. Call it a five star simply because it's five stars. Um, and also, I didn't mention this, but it does have, if you look at the plugs down here, the plugs are actually IP65 rated and sealed as well. So 
you can plug it in, it, it's completely sealed. Um, and this, actually, if you look at the back, as I said, <coughs> adapter, and you can put, it comes with a wireless LAN, but simple attachment, simple kind of plug and play, attach it right to the trolley system. Uh, as Mike said, we also have these that are more stationary, and we're gonna talk about that in a few minutes as well. But that's really the, uh, the trolley light and the trolley light three star, the trolley light five star. As I said, it's, it's plug and play. It's multiple use in, in multiple clean rooms and um, really available also. The other thing I wanted to mention is, especially in this case, this can be actually made available in a dual display model. So you can actually have a display here and a display up here, up here, either horizontally or vertically with the keyboard as well. So you have options, you have a lot of options and that's kind of the beauty of Systec and Solutions. There's a lot of really good clean options for everyone. This particular unit has a very strong battery pack integrated in, into the base. Really will last up to two to three shifts. The high capacity battery will. Um, very simple to charge, plug it in the wall, charge it. But, you know, these HMI systems are really ideal if your decision to buy is driven by fulfilling your most demanding specifications. So, put that over here. Check in with Mike real quick. Do we have any questions yet, Mike, or anything? Well, I had one that I was going to just mention myself. We're showing the glass keyboards here. Uh, uh, can you, we have the vinyl ones as well? I don't have the vinyl in here. It's actually, these are all demos. So just to let you guys know, I actually send these around the country and have people use these. And I wanted just to say, and that's a great question, Mike, but I wanted just to say that this is a great testament to the durability of these items. Um, they've been sent repeatedly around the, around the country, really, and including the trolleys that they're on. And they're still very well holding up. Um, they're great units. But the membrane keyboard, we do offer a membrane keyboard as well, in addition to the glass keyboard that you see here. Um, the membrane keyboard offers a little bit more tactile feedback. It's kind of raised, like a little chiclet, it's raised up, but you'll still have more of a tactile feel with that particular keyboard. I always tell customers, if you're gonna be typing and entering data for a long time, I probably would go with the glass keyboard. It's a little easier. Um, and Cool thing about the glass too is it's you can adjust the sensitivity, you can adjust the volume, you can pretty much adjust everything on it. But I wanted to show, in fact, I just did. You can actually use these with clean room gloves, and I've actually tested this with up to three pair of clean room gloves, um, and they work absolutely fine. And just to give you an example, I will show you. Hopefully, everyone can see that. Let me bring it over a little bit. Just a, a paint program, um, but it's no problem with clean room gloves ever. Um, they work flawlessly and, and they always have. And again, this is a projected capacitive screen. Um, it, it's the latest, greatest, basically touch screen that you can get in a computer terminal right now. So, um, so yeah, pretty cool. And also- And um, Eric, Eric, I did, we do have one question here. Um, yeah. Have we, do we have a new USB connection wire that has been added to one of our uh, units, is that on a tablet or on a wave? It's actually on the tablet, but All I'm right. glad you brought that up, Mike, because as far as USBs, I have a lot of customers that customize these units and they add either more USBs. In fact, you could add it right here. If you can see that, there's a cap. There's a cap here, there's a cap here, there's a power button. And then on the other side, you've got the option of other accessories. You can do a USB here where I've got the scanner holder an additional one or an additional landline. Um, so there's a lot of options. Great question though. But the uh, the actual USB, the new USB-A is on our tablets, which I want to show you as well. And, and just, just to the uh, audience, I see some more questions coming in. We're going to get to them. Let's, let's let Eric get through this. And Eric, did we add to some USB uh, connection to the tablet as well? We did. We added a USB-A cable for data entry into the actual tablets. This, I've actually got one on order. They're so new now. I've actually had a couple of customers get them already, but I don't even have one yet as a demo. I wish I did to show you, but this is just the last version of tablet. Um, still just an awesome product, but what we did at SysTech, we wanted to make this better and 
essentially, and we did. We um, we made it a little lighter. We made it a little sleeker. Um, it's still using a Microsoft Surface Pro internally. And for those of you on an Apple platform, we can also do the iPad Pro uh, internally for these as well. Um, but forward-facing camera. Uh, if you look, this is actually a magnet. This has not changed at all. So it is a magnet and to charge it. It's very simple. IP65 completely washed down ready. Um, and the new one will have a USB port right here where this one is. But stainless steel casing, again, no ridges, no crevices, no cracks, completely easy to wash down um, and really clean, modern and easy. So it's, it's, it's perfect for that. And Eric, uh, on, on the new, the next gen tablet, on the right hand side where you said the USB port would be, will there be a cap that needs to be screwed on and off for that or not? There will be, there definitely will be. In fact, I might be able to get this one off. Yeah, to show you something similar here. And hopefully the camera can pick this up. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that or not, but there is a USB in there. Okay. So yeah, great question though. And of course there's an O-ring on this, makes it IP65 ready and rated. Yep. Um, so and also, we add a handle to this to make it a little easier to carry right here. The new one that I'm getting will actually have a handle on it. And also, we have what's called a tablet holder, which this props up basically at about this angle, or it can prop up this way. So either way. Um, and again, completely glove ready. We, got a few, we have a few questions here. I'll just... Well, yeah, I'll do the tablet ones while we're here. Um, what is the weight of the tablet, the new tablet? Because that's what we'll be shipping. I know it's lighter. Yeah, the new tablet is lighter. Good question because the one thing we've heard is this over time, if you're holding it in a clean room, it can get a little bit, a little bit heavy feeling. To me, it's not heavy, but um, the new tablet, the old tablet, this one, is about seven to eight pounds. So, you know, the new tablet, though, is five to six pounds. So it doesn't sound like a lot but it is significant enough to make it feel a lot lighter. Plus the new tablet is even sleeker than this. And I always thought this was a pretty sleek tablet from the width here um, and the depth, but they're actually, they found a way to make this even slimmer and keep it at IP65. So yeah, great question. And still on tablets, um, can an existing Surface Pro that a, a customer may already have just be inserted into the enclosure or does, or does it get purchased as a total unit? It gets purchased as a total unit. That's a great question, and I get that question a lot um, because what happens is um, they basically have to seal this entire thing up. This is Gorilla Glass on the front, and this is a very special adhesive type of um, taping and stripping that goes on here, um, and it gets basically permanently sealed. I mean, they can definitely open it up in the factory, but when it's like with me or with someone in a clean room, it's going to stay like this. So that's a great question though. But what we can do also, just to let everyone know, is we can actually use other tablets. If you have a tablet that you have in mind, uh, and I know there's a lot of different tablets out there, we can always make custom cases for it. Uh, we can always try to do that for you. But right now we really offer the Microsoft Surface Pro Model 1866 and the iPad Pro as well. Good, and I'm gonna back up two questions that uh, go back to the wave. Um, um, and there are kind of multiple questions in here. Uh, are there thin client and ultra thin client versions available? Yes, uh, there is definitely thin client version available. Uh, Systec uses the iGel exclusively. Um, it's in case a lot of people that are in the States haven't really heard of that specific thin client. It, they have a partnership with uh, iGel in Europe and it's one of the top selling thin clients in Europe. So they, they use that essentially in all of their thin clients in our Systec systems. But it has also um, been now approved and certified on Rockwell Thin Manager Thin Client, I believe as well. Right, right. exactly, yep. yep. Uh, and Good then question. another question, how much customization uh, can be done inside you know, on the wave in terms of CPUs, RAM, S, you know, the solid state drive, et cetera? Yeah, that's a great question. And I was gonna get around back to that, but I'm glad you asked that. Um, essentially, you can do anything with these as far as you can go up to 16 gigabytes of RAM. They typically come with four or eight, but we can customize and give you more. Um, also, solid state drives. We can go up to 512. 
Um, as far as the actual Intel processors, we started a Celeron, um, especially for like the thin client units where you don't need a lot of Intel power. And we go from the i3 basically all the way to the i7. Um, I have a lot of customers that like the i5 seventh generation, even better than like the i7 fifth generation. So it's, it's a little faster, it's a little more efficient. Um, but to answer your question, yeah, you, you can basically choose the storage, you can choose the, uh, the RAM, you can choose the actual processor. And, and I think just a general answer we can give everyone, after this we'll mail out the product uh, uh, guide that has all, all these questions documented in there. Um, one other question was on Citrix. Uh, have these been used on Citrix? I mean, I know they, they come pre, pre-approved for PassX, Verum PassX software, Rockwell Thin Manager, iGel Thin Manager. I just don't know Citrix myself, to be honest. Yeah, and I, I, I've heard they have been, but I don't want to say yes to that question right now. I can find out though. I, we can certainly find out and post that. We will. We all yeah. right. Yeah, let me let me jump down to see what else uh, we got through the weight of the tablet. Um, no, I think we're through the questions so far. So I'll stop yeah. interrupting you. Oh, no problem. No problem at all. Yeah, but um, the tablet again, really ideal and. Where, what this would replace, I have a lot of customers say, well, where and when should I use a tablet as opposed to a wave unit? Wave unit is a full-blown industrial computer. Tablet, it's an industrial tablet is what I tell people. And what that means is a tablet is really and should be used to replace a paper binder. Um, SOPs, things of that nature, that's where tablets can really be handy. But when you're looking at MES systems, ERP systems, things of that nature, you really need to go something that's got a lot more power in it. So you really need to go with the wave unit. But um, yeah, um, you know, and the other thing I tell people all the time is, you know, what I get the question of what makes SysTech different than other hardware companies, especially the uh, HMI hardware companies. And if you look at these, I mean, obviously they're sleek, they're elegant, they're German designed. Um, they're bead blasted, they're completely smooth, no cracks, no crevices, 304 stainless steel in these. And also, you know, they're fully enclosed. You've got sealed HMIs that are IP65 rated. Um, and again, no gaps of any kind. And then down to my last question that we got about the components. We use top-notch components in these. Um, in fact, we I've had customers request really high-end components and when they saw that what we were putting in these, they were extremely impressed with that. So we really spare no expense with these and um, and really put in the best componentry that we can. Um, so yeah, and uh, you know, we like to think we innovate in this market and um, there's a lot that we can do. And, the, you and did, didn't you already work with a client for something special for Siemens? Was there a, a Siemens connector or something? There was, there's a client that we've got um, that wanted, basically, if we go down to the ports again on the bottom of this unit, I'll just show you back here. If you get down to the ports, you can see those ports right there. They wanted essentially a Siemens uh, ethernet connection. It's a specific brand. And there's actually an ethernet in here now but when the cap's off, it's going to make it, you're going to have some ingress there. You're going to have some potential of water or cleaner or um, dust to get into this. So what they really wanted was one that you could just use open, plug in your Ethernet, and hose it down if you needed to with it open. Because right now, like I said, I mean, these are designed to be used and capped back up. Um, so, yeah. You know, things like that, we, we definitely take into account and we can help you out with that. Any kind of custom work, we, we like to do that a lot, actually. Um, question, do you have wireless, wireless, wireless Ethernet? Absolutely. Uh, we have uh, wireless and you can have it in the unit if you want to. Some customers don't for secure reasons, but um, I'd say most of the customers want wireless. From a trolley perspective, if you look at the back of this one, this right here, we call it a Starbucks, a Starbucks top or a Starbucks cup. This is actually the Wi-Fi antenna on this. Um, so when I put this together, when I hook this into here, 
this has a Wi-Fi adapter in it that I just plug right in and it works beautifully. And um, plus you've got other ports here you can use for Bluetooth, for Wi-Fi, anything of that nature. Yeah. So going back to uh, tablets, another question here. Tough books claim IP65 rating. What's the differentiator between Tough Book and Sysdeck? I think we've been talking about IP65 versus clean room hygienic procedure all week. Yeah. Um, so what is the difference between IP65 and really being clean room ready? That's a great question. And you know, if you look at the Panasonic Tough Books, they're great for things like construction sites, um, building sites more industrial construction type of areas not so much clean room in fact if you look at the tough book the rating on those i think it's an ip53 rating which doesn't sound like a lot but it's considerably less than an ip65 plus it has a lot of cracks and crevices in it uh, the tough the tough book themselves have quite a bit of those those fins on them and over time that can accumulate any kind of particulate it makes cleaning it much more difficult. Um, so really, people ask me, is the tough book clean and ready? It's really not when you think about it. And uh, it's a great, great item, though, for, you know, uh, basically hazardous construction areas. Great question, though. And then we have a question here uh, about PassX being a Citrix-based Citrix platform, and that should be compatible. And and. To, to the person who wrote that in, you're, you're probably right. What we will do, since we do capture these questions, right. um, we will check with Verum, Verum now going by Kerber, uh, to to make sure we answer this one properly, um, and we'll get that back out. So we're not gonna leave, I don't know if I can answer it directly right here. We will get that answered. It will be out in the follow-up when we finish right. this. Yeah, definitely, we'll do that, Mike. Um, any other questions that we've got right now? I, I do want you to be able to get onto the mounting systems because there's so many mounting systems. Oh, before we leave, the height of the pole on the units to your right and left, um, can someone order that in a different height if they'd like? Absolutely. I mean, you can get this, basically you can get it taller, you can get it shorter. Um, it would be the same as mounting like one of our YouTube arms, higher or lower on the wall, which Mike will show you here in a shortly. Actually, we'll both show you. But you can definitely get this. Um, not only adjustable or not only uh, at your own configuration, we do have an adjustable one. Um, I don't really recommend it a whole lot just because there's always that possibility that moisture, cleaning fluid, whatever can get down in, in the seal on it. So um, I question the IP65, um, the ingress protection on the adjustable one. We can definitely get you a pole any height you want. Yeah. Good. And we're showing these keyboards with one of the torque hinges between the, attaching it to the wave. They can also have two, correct? Yeah, you can have a dual hinge, which would go on each end. Um, a little bit more strength there. And I really recommend the dual hinge, especially if it's going into a wall and you have a wall mount unit behind it. It definitely would give it more structure and more rigidity. but. I'm telling you, these single torque hinges are a thing of beauty. I mean, they're really well engineered. Um, they're tight, but they're not too tight. It's just, it's a perfect hinge system on this. Good. And uh, next question, <laughs> we're at the right spot here. Uh, yeah. Is your ability to support uh, both a PassX and a thin min uh, manager, you know, essentially, could we put two waves on one trolley? Absolutely. Um, you can put, it's called a duplex basically, and you can actually have a wave. You can see this one. You can have another wave right above it horizontally. Um, and you could alter the height of it if you wanted to. Keyboard would still be here. This wave would still be here. So we can definitely do that. Um, we can kind of mix and match different ones um, depending on what your needs are. One could have a thin client and the other one maybe might have like an i5 in it uh, for different reasons. So yeah, we do that all the time. Great question. Uh, maybe this is a good time to transition over. We have one slide showing uh, pictures of all the different mounting uh, configurations. Why don't I share that? And because uh, that also uh, addresses um, mm -hmm. questions on dual screens. Yeah. Let does. me know when it's up. And then we also have some um, nice photographs to follow. 
Yeah, and this is actually our mounting systems. Let me just move over here so I can see it. Uh, my computer's kind of around my tripod. But um, if I look at these mounting systems, these are some of the most popular ones that we do offer. Um, the L-Tube and the U-Tube are extremely popular. Of all on this page, though, the U-Tube is probably the most popular, and I'll show you why in just a second. Um, we also have a two-point fixation, a ceiling mounting, which is just what it says. It comes down off the ceiling. A duplex vertical, which is a neat, a neat way to really stack two monitors. A duplex horizontal, which is just what it says. You have two monitors that are literally left and right side by side. And you can have it. It's got it with one keyboard there. But you can actually have that with two keyboards if you want, doing two separate jobs entirely. The pedestal table is a, it's basically it's a tabletop mount. Um, typically, that pedestal is about 12 inches high. It's for people that are either sitting on like a stool, things of that, things of that nature. And then direct wall mount is just what it says. It's right in the wall, keyboard right off of it. Um, and again, these are all fixed. But the beauty of these is like the YouTube, for instance. And Mike, you can probably go forward. Um, whoops, hang on, I got to get my cursor over there. There we go. There's the pivot. Yeah. This is what the YouTube does. It's got the couplings on it uh, on the top where it's mounted to the wall and on the bottom, which actually mounts into the computer. And you can see the wires all go through the YouTube itself. Uh, makes this completely IP65 protected. Uh, and it's, it's mounted on any height of wall that you, or any height, at any height you would like. Um, the real thing that I love about the YouTube is that you can push this in and out from the wall it's basically movable, swivels all the way around either side, left or right. It can come all the way forward, obviously, if you're working forward on it. So uh, just a really, really cool unit. We do a lot of business with these because they are so popular. And if you have clean rooms where you have sort of a tight space, this is ideal. I mean, this really it, it can be pushed back. Uh, it can be pushed in. So it's really, really cool. And that I think it's probably worth pointing out the three legs on the U, you know, vertical, the one, the vertical one in back, the horizontal one, uh, mm -hmm. the vertical one closer to the operator. The lengths of those tubes are all uh, user selectable. Right. Exactly. They are. You, and you can actually we have a tool, a dimensioning tool that you can actually go online and choose what lengths you want on each one of those. It, it really is neat. So couple any questions on mounting systems before we hop into some of the other clean room accessories that can be used in conjunction yeah and those are a little more fixed um, as Mike said and the ones that I'm showing you here today like the five-star trolley the three-star trolley uh, even like the tablet these are more mobile solutions and really with I just wanted to mention too one more thing with the mobile units with the trolleys that we offer each one of these has their own varying footprint so each one takes up a certain amount on the floor, a certain amount of space on the floor. Uh, we also have a trapezoid um, trolley light that is really unique in that it, it, it's literally, it doesn't take up hardly any space on the floor. Um, that, you know, this can be mounted on, this can be mounted on. So we have a lot of options is the bottom line to help you out, so. Good. So you wanna maybe run through the keyboards, scanners, and printer boxes? Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, just looking at the keyboards here, we talked about the actual, um, let me just look at my screen. We did talk about the keyboards and one's a membrane and one is a glass keyboard. Um, the beauty of these really, there's no external wires. There's no external connectors or ports. They're IP65 ready. They're easy to clean. And again, that single torque hinge is really, it's, it's, it's really, really engineered well and it works extremely well. In addition to these two, though, we do offer a new keyboard now. It's a medical grade glass keyboard that is wireless. So it does offer Bluetooth. And um, I've got a couple of those on order as demos. So any, you know, anybody wants to try one of those out, feel free to hit me up. I'll be happy to send you one. And then we do offer also scanner boxes and printer boxes. Uh, scanner boxes and printer boxes <clears throat> think of basically scanners and printers. Uh, they typically take up some room in a clean room. 
this is a really easy novel way to keep those compacted, keep those in an IP65 rated box with glass on the front. So you always have access to it. Um, really, you know, scanner box and the printer box, they come in different sizes as well. Uh, can be bolted down, can be somewhat movable, but they are pretty heavy. I have customers that actually put these in the wall of the clean room and use them that way. So yeah. Uh, let me see. I know we have some pictures. We'd like to get to those. <clears throat> I guess we have a bigger list here of, of just some of the, the clients. And these are really not just uh, Systex clients worldwide, but these are Grantex clients selling Systex here mm -hmm. in uh, the U.S. So the uh, adoption rate has been very, very high and, and uh, you know, repeat repeat purchases, which is a very, very good sign. Right. Yeah. Um, one thing I did, oh, I did, I told you I had one slide on Grand Tech. I have two. One other thing I did want to mention is you're putting in uh, a bit of an infrastructure through your clean rooms, your manufacturing facility. Uh, we do have a, a dedicated ITOT team for former Pharma 4.0 activities. So whether it's the networking and everything that needs to be done there, uh, your computing infrastructure, everything that needs to be done there, or the cybersecurity, we actually have a, a dedicated cybersecurity group as well. Um, we can certainly help with anything going on in your ITOT infrastructure uh, throughout all of your uh, manufacturing operations. Mm -hmm. um, if you have any other questions, um, let us know. Otherwise, we have some uh, very nice uh, photographs and images of the units out uh, out in the field. Yeah, absolutely. I'll let you explain this one. This is a great yeah. shot. Yeah, that's an awesome shot of a, of a YouTube in action. You can see how it's, it's mounted almost, if you look at it, in a corner, which is another ideal application for this. It's very space saving. Um, and if you look next to it on the right is one of those scanner printer boxes. Oh, here. Mounted into the wall. If you look right to the right of that HMI, right there, you got it. Perfect. And that's, you know, that's what we, I have a lot of people that mount those into the walls themselves as opposed to making them freestanding. But this really shows you ideally, and it's got the scanner fork on the, uh, the actual wave unit there or the pilot unit. That's a scanner fork for the scanner that's in his hand. That's a wireless scanner. Um, a lot of customers do use that, but that's kind of the beauty of the YouTube here. It's very space saving. Mm -hmm. uh, there's quite a bit. Now you can show the different footprints of the different trolley systems. Yeah. Yeah. I love this slide. This slide really shows from left to right um, the trolley trapezoid, which is the one I don't have yet, but I'm going to be getting a demo of that to show everyone soon. And it's got the smallest footprint. It's got, again, battery in it, um, can last up to two shifts. The trolley three star that I showed you a uh, second from the right. You can see the mode it's in there. You actually just have an, a wave HMI mounted on that 60 degree angle. And it's almost used as a, a high speed tablet, more or less. There's no there's no keyboard mounted to that. The one I have has the keyboard on it. Um, and then to the right of that is a great example of a couple, two of them, uh, five star trolleys. And these are actually made with the lower uh, customization two. So they're, the height of these is a little lower than normal. And a lot of that is to offset the one on the far right, to offset the duplex. So it, it is taller significantly. Um, but again, you know, as I've said over and over, you have options and you have a lot of options here. Mm -hmm. It's like another YouTube uh, back in the corner. Yeah, YouTube in the corner. Um, you can see, and again, corner applications, pictures can show so much more than I can tell. And a lot of people, when I try to describe a YouTube and putting it in a corner, they don't really get it until they see these pictures, but it really is a space saver. Um, it's an ideal system that really can be moved in and out and swiveled around. Great yeah. item. Uh, one question just popped in. Um, what sort of cleaners can be used on uh, these these units? Yeah, great question. Um, we recommend up to a 25% hydrogen peroxide mixture. Um, I have a lot of customers that use Spore Cleanse. And Spore Cleanse is great if it's used right. In other words, if it's basically sprayed on, let to sit, and then completely wiped off. Um, but really, 
I've never really seen a cleaner. If it's greater than 25% hydrogen peroxide, I would not recommend it. But we actually have a list of cleaners that we can send out that these work beautifully with. Good. Uh, and one other, I know we have more pictures, but one other question, you know, what are our lead times? I know that kind of varies on the unit you're buying and how much is customized, but kind of in general, what are our lead times? Yeah, lead times like right now, um, you're looking anywhere from, you know, eight to 12 weeks realistically. Um, I know we have been extremely busy this, this year, actually this whole year. And, um, if you were to order like a tablet, for instance, right now, we could probably get that to you within four weeks, four to five weeks. Uh, if it was a wave unit, you know, a larger unit like this, or it was custom made, um, with the height adjustable on the back, it would probably be more at the 12 week range. So, yeah. Good. All right. Unless another one pops in. Uh, hang on. So the question here, what are our standard warranty and extended warranty options um, and how are they repaired? So I can do the repair. Do you know the warranty uh, answer? Yeah, yeah. See, the warranty on these is six months. We do have an option where you can buy up to three years, though, um, on these units themselves. And Mike, you want to handle the repair one? Yeah. Um, the the let's call them lower level repairs uh grand tech we do we have been trained and we have two offices that are set up with all the right equipment and depending on exactly what it is if it's swapping out a keyboard mm -hmm. you know a, a customer can typically do that themselves there's one there's one uh, specialized bolt going through the torque hinge but if for some reason uh, we had to get to the inside uh, of a unit there's some level of repair we can certainly do here at Grand Tech. You know, we do it in both Chicago and in Cleveland. Um, and then if you get to a very high level uh, situation, then it may have to go back to Germany. Um, but I don't know of any situations where we've had that yet. We've done uh, the repairs ourselves so far. We do recommend though, if you have a, a certain amount in um, to have a spare and when something yeah. happens, swap out to the spare and then we can uh, repair the, the unit. And the repair can, in most cases, it's shippable right back to our uh, facility and uh, we get it done and send it back. Uh, we have had one case where a customer uh, decided to do a kind of significant change to what was initially ordered, uh, but they did have a clean electronics area we could use and we could send our tech to their site. And I wanna say the person spent two days and did the repairs there. Right, yeah. And I don't see a lot of repairs with these units, honestly. I mean, no. I haven't been here the longest time, but I, I just, I don't see it much. Um, so it's, uh, and I'm not saying there's not gonna be any repairs in the future. I'm sure, I'm certain there will, but um, they're really well made. So. Yeah. Uh, this is another uh, YouTube installation here. Uh, yeah. So this is kind of a, a split screen. You gotta, you gotta look for a second. There are three images here. Uh, yeah. You can kind of go through them, Eric. Yeah, absolutely. The, the image on the left on the bottom there is an actual wall mount. Uh, typically that wall mount, uh, it varies as far as how far you want it from the wall. This one looks like about four or five inches from the wall itself. This strictly is a touch screen. You can see there's no keyboard attached. So that's how they're, th this particular customer is using this one. Um, the one in the middle is our old friend, the YouTube support arm. Um, again, swinging away, swinging back, a lot of options there. And on the right is a really good example of what's called a device adapter. The device adapter is what attaches the actual pole on the trolley to the back of the wave unit with those four screws that I, that I indicated. Um, if you look at the actual device adapter as well, there's a cap on it. You can see that cap is removable. We can add, I just had a customer want more, uh, basically more USB ports. We can add more in that, so it plugs in there. Um, so a lot of options there, but that really shows you also the integrity of the back of the product. It's very structurally sound, very IP65 rated to say the least. And I would point out, it's pro probably obvious to anyone in engineering, but uh, the, the bolt pattern and the face of this adapter here is the same on every unit, whether it's you know a pole like this, whether it's a YouTube, whether it's a direct wall mount, um, everyone is the same, and it just makes for you know standardization. So any wave can really be bolted into any 
mounting situation that uh, right. you have. Right, Mike. You can see how, you know, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bolts across the top, two in the middle. So it's, uh, it's all standard. These are the four ones, again, that you would attach the actual trolley to the unit with, with this being the device adapter. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I know we're getting a little short on time. Let me see what other photos we have. Mm -hmm. oh, a couple of nice shots here. Yeah. Um, the bottom left is actually called a trolley maxi. It's more designed to be more permanently in place. We can put wheels on these. This customer has decided to basically seal up the bottom and not have it with wheels. Um, does have a built-in keyboard, as you can see. You can put varying uh, adjustments on this. You can also put different size wave units or pilot units on this actual unit. And in the bottom, you have a printer box uh, also that can be used for basically any, any of your barcode printers. Um, and then on the right is a good example of a floating YouTube. This is actually up close of that, uh, that fork, that scanner fork, I call it, or scanner holder for the barcode scanners on there. Just something that it really makes a big difference is having it somewhere to put there um, makes a big difference. And this is actually with the glass keyboard. That's about a 21 inch wave right there. I think that was all the pictures. Yeah. So I know we were targeting 45 minutes and it's 47, so not bad. Any other questions while we're here? And we will um, we will follow up. We will send out three things, the, the presentation. Yeah. Uh, we will send out the product guide, which should answer any other product question you have from CPU to, uh, you know, uh, some of the basic dimensions. But we also then have um, a set of drawings on all the mounting options uh, and it shows not only how they mount, but on things like the YouTubes, what your uh, what your range is, like the three legs of a U, the vertical, the horizontal, and the vertical. What are your options? How far can you go? I mean, obviously, there's a limit. Um, and we'll, we'll get that bundled up and send that out uh, to everyone as well. Were there any other questions here um, while we're all together? And I'm still reading the feed as, as they come in, because we'd love to answer it now. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we really appreciate well, we really appreciate you attending. We we appreciate you giving us, us some of your time. Um, and also, I, I hope you you understand that we're all, as we're all living in this uh, COVID situation. Um, you know, Eric and I are doing this from home, so we appreciate Eric turning his dining room into a sales demo room. Uh, yeah. and there's, there's actually one more uh, person that you don't know, Jeff, who is actually running uh, this entire uh, show for us and keeping everything yep. um, moving. Oh, one question came in, hinge adjustment ever required? And yeah, people adjust hinges all the time. Eric, can you, let me get my screen. I'll stop sharing. Focus in okay. on the side of a uh, torque hinge. Yeah, let me see if I can show this to you. Yeah, just point to it. Right here? Yeah, so right there, you can actually take a cap off each end. Yep. There's a, a, a very right. special hollowed out bolt because through that hinge, the cable goes from the keyboard to the wave. Mm -hmm. And you can adjust how tight that bolt is, the, 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 amount of torque you, the amount of torque you put on the bolt, which determines how much tension, how much force it takes to move the keyboard up and down. Right, it's, and just to let you know, I mean, I torqued this one up pretty good. This is my newest demo and uh, I like a lot of like pressure so it doesn't move. I can just basically rest on it. I've got all my weight on it right now, it's, as you can hear, but um, some people like a little less, like this one is a little bit less, as you can see, and this one's a little bit, so yeah, you can do that. Yeah, and you can double up on the hinges. Yeah, if you ever to take, if you were ever to take one of those hinges apart and look at uh, how it's made, uh, the, 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 way, the way you can route uh, cables through there uh, is just spectacular. The, there's a bolt in there that is just, it's, oh, I'm a mechanical engineer, it's just wonderful to look at. So, uh, again, we really appreciate your time. If you have any more questions, you can always uh, email in or you can drop it on uh, info at grandtech.com. But we will follow up uh, with uh, the documents I mentioned, the product guide, the uh, drawing list, uh, this presentation. And, and we'll probably just rewrite, uh, we'll just take these questions and, and put them in the body of the email and answer them again to make sure everybody feels like they got an answer to a question. Because the one we didn't answer was the question about the PassX Thin Manager uh, and Citrix. So we, we will get that one answered before we send it out. We certainly will.
But again, everyone, thank you very much. We really appreciate it. I hope this was informative and uh, we really appreciate you giving us, for most of you, probably your lunch hour. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you.